uh, this is not, not by any means professional. This is letting the Holy Spirit have his way. But I want to explain to you how this has happened. Uh, so this is what we go hot off the fire. It's current. It's what God's doing. And I was so, uh, by Wednesday, I was, I just knew, I knew, I knew, I could see the fingerprint of God all over what he's been doing. And I'm talking about just this past week. So um, it was kind of bold for me to call Pastor Bob, and I said, um, I have something that's more than a yay God, and I, I really would like to share it if there's time. So he messaged back to me, and he says, I have no problem deferring to you. <laughs> that tells you a lot about your leader and your pastor. He's my pastor, too. Um, and then he said, I have something I would like to share about Silas. And I went, that's when I got excited because I knew that God was putting all of this together. And listen, it's okay. It's not church, it's what we're used to doing and having. It's all him. And whatever he wants to do, we need to step aside and let him do it and just be obedient. And so we can get excited about that. Oh, uh, I'm going to tell you what happened in a minute. I thought I would ask you if, um, I think most of you here have heard how I came to go to the Philippines. I, I've been to 10 countries, but there's, there's three people groups that really, really have my heart. And of course, it's the Philippines that I return to year after year, except for this last two years with all that's going on. Well, so is there anybody who doesn't know? about how it all happened. Okay, just a tiny little bit, okay, before we, we get into this. Um, I have an evangelist friend in the United States who was asked by another evangelist to get a team together. This is back in, I think, 2002, something like that, uh, to go. So I got a call, would I come and be part of the team? And um, it's a whole story in and of itself, so I'm just going to give you a, a touch of how, how this all happened. So we, we went, um, we landed in Manila, and we were there for an entire week before this couple who had set this all up even showed up. And so we're praying, and, uh, because we don't know what we're doing. We're counting on this other couple. And so they came, and we went all up through the northern part of uh, the main island called Luzon. And uh, then we flew from there to the island of Palawan, and uh, we had some meetings, and uh, let me just say that things did not proceed as this couple had desired, and we were on the um, ocean side, and in these two little, uh, I'll say cottages, okay, because everything there is bamboo and nipa huts, roof, and uh, so they were in one, and there were three of us in the, in the other, three of us ladies. And anyway, <laughs> it came morning, and uh, there was no sound at all of our food. Everything was over on their side, the other cottage. And so Johnny, who was our jeepney driver, came by, and we said, Johnny, we're hungry. We don't want to wake them up. Will you go and, and get our food for us? And he said, oh, they're not here. I said, What? So long story short, in the middle of the night, they'd had it, and they contacted the chimney driver, and they left. They went back to the United States. They left us. They abandoned us. There we were. This is a long time ago. No cell phones, no contacts. What were we going to do? We prayed, and God did some awesome things, and it was there you know, it's so good because the situations in life that we think are the worst, God has a plan. God has a plan, and his plan is good. So that's where I met Francis and Tata. Now, Francis and Tata are both um, ordained ministers. They both were working in ministry, uh, both ordained different um, headships and different denominations. They met, married, and now they have ministry. Now, the Philippines is comprised of 7,700 and I think it's something like two islands, many, many islands, of which there are three main islands. 
And I've, you heard me talking, uh, I think it was the last message I gave about the, the jail. That was in the island of Mindanao, and that's one of the largest islands. Uh, the people there uh, want to have it become a Muslim autonomous state. And I've done a lot of ministry all, all through that island. We fly from one island to the other to the other, and um, it really is tiring, to be honest. You have to go through. Some people are dark, and every time I Hello. Hmm. Um, it's my train of thought here. Uh, so it's on that island that in the year 2006 we built the children's home. Okay. Am I okay to proceed? Okay. Um, so I've been to different places around the islands, and as you know, they are in what's called the Ring of Fire, completely surrounded, South China Sea on one side and the ocean on the other. But Francis and Tata live on the island of Palawan. It's very long and narrow, surrounded by water. Mountains go right through the center, and it's called the last frontier because it's so jungle-like, so untouched by a lot of civilization. It has one main, uh, city that when you fly in, that's where you fly to, Porta Princesa, and then you make your way up the island and there's all these little towns. And Nara reminds me a little bit of, um, you know how Hamilton kind of included Waterdown and Ancaster and Dundas? Well, it's like that. Nara city or town proper is actually very small, but it takes in all these other little tiny villages in a large area. So that's where Francis and Tata live. Now they have a church, um, and I forget what the original name of it was. Uh, so let me, I just want to give you a little bit of background on this. I don't remember the year. I was on a mission trip in Thailand, and while I was having devotions one day, and this is the Holy Spirit, he said, look beside and look behind. And I remember thinking, what? But I wrote it down in my journal. We flew then on to the Philippines, and uh, it was one day uh, we were on our way from a ministry assignment, and it came back to me, look beside and look behind. We were in the jeepney, I'm not Jibney, the tricycle, you know those, they're like a little tin can with a motorcycle, and you have to crouch down in. And I said to the driver, just, just drive on down this road. I said, stop. And we were at a corner, property, and who should come running out but Tata? That's her nickname, they all go by nicknames there. And she said, Mom Bella, what are you, what are you doing? And I, so I told her, uh, well, I'm supposed to look beside and look behind. And I said, tell me about this property. Okay, so long story short, within four days, within four days, the people sold that property and we bought it. Well, it sat for a while and uh, as time goes on in ministry and the Holy Spirit reveals things and needs to you, uh, they have a church and the, their house, how can I describe their house? It, it started with a shell of a room, and then as they had finances uh, that would come along, they'd kind of put another little room, and it was like this patchwork, you know. And it came time to build what is now called the Father's Mission House. So they live in the Mission House now, and the building that was their house, we have um, made into the full-time proper church, as they call it, and the old church, which you're going to see uh, some pictures of, is their children's church, their meeting hall, it's, it's their everything. Um, so I had just jokingly in conversation said, uh, well, we're going to call this Kingdom Boulevard. And uh, Tata said, I'm in contact with them all the time, and that's why I'm up late at night or early in the morning. And she said, Mom, she said, that was such a prophetic word. She said, it is Kingdom Boulevard because we have the Father's Mission House, we have the Father's Church, we have the original church, and then, and, and I've shared the incredible story of how God made a way for me to buy a house when I was never looking for one. So we call it the DTM House. It's kind of like our, our 
center, our base there. So we have it. Well, then these Filipinos who live in California, they've been there 40 years, so I, I, they're very American in their thinking. If they didn't come, um, because they do ministry down in the southern part, and they were looking for a place to build a, a home for holiday. So they're beside me, and now under construction is another couple from their same church. So that's like, I don't know what, six buildings now down this street? So there's so much that God's doing there in that when I first went, they were very depressed. They had felt they had only been ministering there for three years, and they felt very um, alone. They really didn't have anyone to stand beside them. And... Uh, God knit our hearts together, and I returned year after year. I think it was the third year of returning, uh, and I had a young woman from Tennessee at that period of time that would accompany me. I, I saw that Francis, um, I live with them. This is long before I had the house. I live with them, and when you live with them, you get to really know people. And you, your hearts are knit together. And I noticed that he didn't have his wedding ring, they were so poor that he sold his wedding ring, and I, I couldn't get over that. So many years later, when we uh, were going through my mother's things, when she was going to go and stay, well, actually live in a long-term facility, long-term care facility, uh, we were going through her things, and she said, I don't want any of this. And there in a little box was my stepfather's wedding ring. And I knew that I knew that I knew where that ring was to go. But I had to wait for the right time. And so it was about three years ago. And, uh, they were having a farewell celebration for me um, as I was returning back to Canada the following day. And I told them the story of a young man who had given his all, his all, for the sake of the gospel. And after I told him the story of how he sold his wedding ring, blah, blah, I told him that it was indeed their pastor, Francis, who is a son to me. They are family in every way. Anyway, I placed that ring on his finger, and it fit. And uh, I'll often make comments and pictures when I see his hand with that ring on. Um, God is such a good God. Well, we... Uh, have gone through a lot. They are so faithful, they are so humble, and God has really, really raised them up. They feel like they're so small, and yet God has given such favor. It was on this road, this journey of life, that we built the church in Aramaywan. Actually, um, and I forget, I'm sorry that you folks there, are, hi on Zoom. <laughs> That the, the Denbors, I invited them to come. And so they saw some of what um, you people here have supported this ministry. So everything that Pastor Bob said about your input in uh, Silas's ministry is the same here. And your seeds have good soil and good fruit and a harvest that is growing. So the Denbors came and saw David and Marion. They were at um, Aramae 1. And the pastor there, the pastora, is a young woman. She's only 32, not married. And we call her Mylan, Pastor Mylan. And uh, she's the one that we had sing the song for Pastor Bob last year for Pastor Appreciation Day. She does an amazing work there. Besides there, she also does, uh, we have feeding outreaches at all of our churches, plus areas that are not churches. And that we also support the leaders that we have in these churches. So that's Pastor Mayan. So they also go out to a Muslim community and do a feeding outreach there. And you've heard me say one of the things I love about what we do with our feeding outreaches is, is not just feeding them. When, when it's children, they play some games with them, but then they teach the Bible and they have them memorize scripture. They know scripture by far more than any people group that I know. And when they worship, they sing the word of the Lord. So that church was built, and then um, that's about an hour outside of uh, Nara. And then on down, <laughs> we built another church, and that church is, is in Malinao, and Malinao is tribal, and that's with the Takbanwa tree. 
uh, people. And the pastor there is a 29-year-old young woman. Her, her name is Baby. It's spelled B-H-E-B-E. And her father also assists her there because it's of where it is. It's located, and so she's not alone when she's, she's out there. So that's an amazing work. And prior to that, about four years before that, on a trip, we had been taken back to uh, the chieftain of the Tokbanawa tribe. They are very protected by the government. We had to have permission to go and see them. That's another whole story on its own. And uh, it was at that meeting we were told, before we went, no pictures, no touching. Guess what? <laughs> they let us take pictures. And he, he actually has one of my best, the chieftain has one of my most favorite pewter crosses ever. And I put it on his neck. And uh, his 84-year-old wife was sitting on the bamboo with him, naked children running around. And guess what happened that day? They accepted Jesus as their Savior. And we were able to then pray over the land. He gave us permission. So you see, there, all of these things are built upon things. The foundation is so important in the, the building of the relationships. So what I'm sharing is 17 years of, of just my involvement there. And so it's on that land in Mali now that we built the Father's Church and uh, minister with these tribal people. And let me tell you, um, Again, I can't go into all the story, but just so you know, I never named any of these churches. I had a dream, and uh, I think I've shared that. But in that dream, uh, th these children were walking to school, and the one said, where, where do you live? And the other child said, I live at my father's house. And as I shared that once, it just began to happen. He said, there will be many more, and I stand in absolute awe as I watch this happen. So there in Nara alone, uh, the original church, I don't remember what the name was, but they delighted to tell me and show me the sign they had changed it to the Father's Church, DeLandon, because it's on DeLandon Street. So Aramaywan is now called the Father's Church, Aramaywan. The church in Mali now is called the Father's Church, <laughs> glory be to God, in Mali now. And we have another, we, we have five now churches, and they're all the Father's Church, da, 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 wherever they are, all to the glory of God. So that's just a tiny little bit of how all of that came to be. Okay, and there's like all kinds of stories about it all. Well, okay. So last Sunday, a week ago, <laughs> I went home and uh, there was a message. And the message was, okay, first of all, let me say there's a time difference. So it's morning here, it's nighttime there, okay? So you have to always be thinking of that when you're communicating with them. So I get a message from this young gal, youth, I mean, I've seen these children grow up from when they were little, and Ferlin is her name, and she's now 18, and she said, Mom, I'm scared, I'm worried. I said, why? And she sends me this, and I'm not showing pictures of this, I have way too many uh, to show you this morning. But there in this picture, I can see the, the bamboo. They use bamboo slats for their flooring. And, and there's water, and it's murky. And I said, what is that? She said, Mom, it's our house. She said, the water is coming in. And I was like, what? You see, this, this typhoon was not supposed to hit Nara. It was supposed to pass by. But it hit Nara full force. I was there in 19. 2019, when they had a, a bad one. They have 20 some typhoons and storms in a year. So it's because of where the Philippine Islands are, are located, and it's largely volcanic. And uh, that was a bad storm. I've been there through two of them. But this surpasses anything they have ever had hit them. So then. So I'm talking to her, and then I get another message from Daniel, and Daniel lives. I said, Daniel, where are you living? He said, Pinakin, that's very close to the ocean. And I said, uh, he, he said, I'm, I'm scared, I'm worried. I said, why? And he, 
he's try, his English is, is not very good. And he's trying to explain to me. He said, this sound, this sound. And he said, it's like number four on fan. And that's the only way he could relate it. The highest level on the fan as it whips around. And it was, he said it went right past his ears. And he was so scared. You see, they don't have schooling, a lot of them. So he's explaining out of his experience. That was the wind, the force of the wind just rushing past and through his house. So I, I asked him, I said, can you make your way to the DTM house? Because you'll be safe. The DTM house is a, little, is a fair bit higher. It's just the way it was built, um, at the ground and the foundation. And so now I start getting messages and I start getting pictures. I was up till 3 in the morning and uh, Tata was sending pictures and talking to me. Now, what I've done, I want you to hear, if you can, her heart and her words. So what I've done is just copied a lot of uh, the conversation between us. Not my response or what I've been saying, but just the things that she have, has said. So this was initially, because I, I didn't know how bad it was yet. She says, hi, mom. She says, I will just, so I, there's some grammar things there, overlook, okay? She says, hi, mom. I will just sending you updates of what happens to most of the places we went this day. Here at Delandon Street, Gayabano, Elvita, Melinao, Antipuluan, these are all our churches, Urdua, Batang Batang, and some parts of Aramewan are also affected. She says, remember, Mom, Linda, the caseworker from DSWD. Okay, that's the social work department, Department of Social Work, we would say. Said her uncle and auntie died because of the flooding. It's so bad. She said, we went to some places yesterday, mentioned above, Mom. It is so devastating. Baby's father. Okay, that's Pastor, Pastor Baby. Her father, um, Okay, you know, like I've been there. I know these people. I know them personally. So let me just, uh, before I go on to this, I had been talking to baby, baby, and uh, she had all these little icons with tears just all running down. I said, "Why are you crying so hard, baby? What's going on?" And she said, "It's my father, my father. I can't stand to see him. He's sitting with his head between his legs and he's crying." I've been to their home. They don't have land. They have, I don't want to say because it sounds so disparaging, but I've been there. They are in an area that's called squatters, where squatters can be until the government comes and takes it all away because it's their land. They have so little. And because his daughter is the pastor, at the church in Mali now, and she's young. He goes and he assists her, but he's so proud of her. And so we've also given a bit of a, a stipend to them. They call it an allowance. That's where every month this church supports DTM. That's where all that money goes. I have ministry in many countries, but I don't send money to every country. There's a lot I have learned about trust and where it goes, and they have had to be taught from the foundation to keep books and account for everything. They are trustworthy. But that's where your funds, every month, every month, when you look in your, your directory, the $200 that comes to DTM, that's where it goes, plus some others. But it totally goes there every month. So he has, the father has some, um, managed to somehow get enough money together over the years to buy a new boat. Can you imagine? Brand new boat. Now this boat, because he's a fisherman, this is his livelihood. Without the fish, there is no income. There is no, they call it vian, their, their daily food, their daily needs. So it's secured at the ocean side with other other fisher boats the fishermen and this 
incredible storm, I'll call it, comes up. And the water just came. They, they kept telling me how heavy the rain was, and it just kept coming and coming and coming. And the swells and just the rage. And I'm going to show you pictures so that you can see, because uh, words just will not convey how severe this storm was. And his boat breaks away, and he tries to go out into the water to get his boat, and he can't. And he has to stand there and watch it as it goes in the water further and further away. And then to make matters worse, baby said, Mom, the trees and the logs, the trees broke, and a log came and smashed into the boat. And that they're hoping that uh, when, when everything dies down, that they will be able to see the damage, how much damage has been done. And uh, so they went on to tell me about, so that's baby telling me about the situation with her father. So now I have Tata telling me about baby's father was crying because his fishing boat found totally damaged. It is new, mom, with all the fishing nets and the motor on it. They are in Bali now because they helped repairing the church. The source of their income, Mom. There are nine fishing boats gone among the tribal brethren. <sighs> Supposed to be the Father's Church, Mali Now's anniversary, the 23rd of October. That's next Sunday, and everything's gone. She said, we distributed some rice, but only for a few families. It's all we had. She said, we went to the Muslim community where Pastor Mylan has a feeding program. They are so affected. All of the rice, okay, the rice fields, the water has destroyed them in that area. Again, that's their livelihood. So all the rice, all their clothes, all their appliances, everything's damaged. They're wet, they have no clothes. We're going to try and collect clothes for them today. This Muslim community does not know Jesus, but they know and experience the love of Jesus through the people on the ground. And then, my house, she says, your basement has almost knee level. This, this is Monday yet, I'm talking to them, okay? Your basement has almost knee level water. That's why we told Renelle and Shalane to transfer to the upper part. Marwan also is staying at your house since his neighbors have all been evacuated. The water at Marwan's place yesterday was up to his hips. Now he's tall. Now this house that, that God has brought, this DTM house, is kind of like a split level. I don't know how else to describe it. I have never been in a house in the Philippines that has a basement. So when you go to one end of the kitchen, you just go down a few steps, and I, I was shocked when I saw it. It's all concrete. It's just in the lower one half of the house. It has three windows. So we have this young couple. They have a little one, and they're expecting another baby very soon. And uh, they needed a temporary place to stay. Circumstances, it's another story. They have contacted me, Tata and Francis. I said, that's fine. They can stay there. And, you know, there's things that have to be done when, when you're there. And so they're going to take care of everything. And uh, so what's going to happen? They were there, but it's all water. So they moved up to the main floor. And uh, so Marwin's there. And now I'm saying, whoever needs a place to stay, let them come. So that's just great. Um, so she goes on to tell me uh, that um, the feeding center in the church in Elvita, the water level was already above the head. So they had been rescued. They're, and th this just grips your heart. She said, they're also asking for help, but we have nothing now. She said, last night someone was calling, asking for help, but we can't help but to pray for them. Okay. <laughs> oh, God, you're so awesome. So can we show some pictures of the floods? And uh, I'll kind of go through them. I want you to see what they were facing. This is all Monday. And ironically, this is Thanksgiving Day here in Canada. <laughs> OK. So can, OK, good. Um, yeah. There are people in these buildings. <laughs> 
And these buildings are not strong and secure. Okay, the next one. Yeah. There are, there are people there. Can you, this is not calm, smooth water. Okay, the next one, please. Now, if you look closely, they have a rope <laughs> that they've taken across. And I have a video. I, I have... I have so much, I, there's no way I could bring it all uh, for you to see. But I actually have on the video, I, it may be on Facebook, I don't remember how much I put on there. Uh, but you can watch them as they harness these people and bring them across. And it's so, they don't have all the stuff that we have here. And I'm thinking, oh my word, they have to be rescued. But they're so close to that water as they're, they're coming across it. And that water is, is just raging. Okay, next one, please. You can see the river where the water is, um, is spilling over. And that's exactly what happened. It did, it did uh, go right over onto the land. OK, next picture, please. Yeah, just look at that, hey? And this is that clean water. This is dirty water. <laughs> OK, next picture, please. I mean, look at the force of it. It's taking trees. OK, next, please. Yeah, wow. So you can see how these little boats, and, um, and I'm going to share some other things later on, but the, uh, it, every, it just destroyed everything, the homes that were in its way. The chickens, they eat a lot of chickens. Uh, different animals, everything. Okay, next, please. I just want you to, to get a picture of how this little island, how devastating this, this is. Okay, next one, please. Yeah. Okay, next one. You can see where it's, it's coming in and washing across the land. Unreal. OK. Next one, please. Stop just before. I, I, I don't know what you can see on back there, but just stop before the picture of uh, Tata with the boxes. OK. So just go ahead and let me know if that's the last one. Okay, so I'll, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. So I'm up on, this is uh, Monday night, and uh, you can, yeah, you can go ahead. And uh, I got a phone call. So this is heavy on my heart, right? And I get a phone call from a couple who I will not name, who asked if they could come by. They were on their way to do some other things. And uh, so they came by for a sharp visit. And they've not been to my house before. Look, look at this. Is that not something? Um, how they're trying to rescue people? Wow. And I have to tell you something that was quite surprising to me. Many of them don't swim. They're afraid of the water. They believe there are evil spirits in the water. And there are a lot. Oh, I have to tell you about this picture. Um, I, I know this place so well. This, that main building, there's another building that's beside it that's gone. But what you see on the right-hand side, that's the market. That's the market. That's where they, they don't have, a few do, but not many. They don't have refrigerators. They go every day to get fresh food. And everything's in small quantities. Okay, and that's their meeting place. And that's where they do everything. That's full of water. So you begin to grasp, well, where is the food, and how are they going to get any food if they can get there? That is devastating. OK. I, th I think that we must be close to the end of the, OK, don't, <laughs> well, uh, OK, so I'll talk about this. So animals were swept away and die in this. 
That's a carabao. That, that's what they call it. Those things are huge. They weigh like 2,000 pounds. They're gigantic with big horns. It's dead. That's food. That's transportation. Okay, the next picture, please. The animals. They're dead. Okay, the next picture. This is the family that had three members all die. This is the coffins lined up in their home. Now, the last that I heard, there were 11 people that had died, but they do not know how many are missing, just swept away. It will take some time when they find, or if indeed they find, any of the bodies. Okay. Uh, we'll stop there. So, uh, this couple came. <laughs> Come back to my, Monday morning, Thanksgiving. This couple came, and they, they're sharing with me. We had a brief uh, time together, lovely. And they handed me an envelope. And they said, open it. And I opened it, and I about fell off my chair. It was a check, not to me personally, but to the ministry. It was a large check, a very, very large check. I about lost it, because you see, they didn't know anything about what happened in the Philippines. Do you get this? That our God, who knows all, had gone before and already spoke to their hearts to share with this ministry. He knew where it would go. He knew the heartaches. And he is so awesome. He's so awesome. And that's why, in part, I wanted so much to share with you this morning. Yet there are things that happen, but God. And it's and the fact that Pastor Bob would share about Silas' ministry, too. I'm, I'm jumping for joy up here. <laughs> God, you are so at work across this land. In the midst of the darkness of days, his light shines brightly through his sons and his daughters. Well, okay, so I tell this couple, they are now the hands of, hands of Jesus extended. I know right where this money's going. Okay, so they leave, and um, I, it's their story to tell if they want to disclose they are and the amount. I'll leave that to them. But they were God's agents. So on time. Our God is always on time. Well, so exciting. So exciting. So we go ahead and have Thanksgiving dinner. I'm going, this is so the I irony of it all. And yet my heart, and I, I'm just there with small, my two daughters and two grandchildren and uh, but my heart, you know, I, I'm thinking about what's going on overseas. So when they left, I went back online, and uh, I'm like, God, we have to, we have to do something. And uh, so I, it's it's late at night, and uh, I'm in touch with Tata, and she says, Mom, I'm just crying even now because when I saw the devastation, it seems like something like a breakout in heaven. So what she's saying is it's like the heavens opened and all of the rain that could be stored there just came down on Nara. Oh, it's now about 1030 at night, and I, I call my directors, and I say, tell them briefly what's happened. I said, we have to help these people. They give their consent. Yes, go ahead. And uh, so, my goodness. I, so this is nighttime, okay? But not for them. <laughs> so I contact Tata and I say, Tata, if we are able to send funds over, are you able to collect them? Can you get to where you need to be to get it? She said, yes, mom, yes. So, this is all the stuff that goes on between us, okay? The, she said, Mom, yes, we can connect, collect. The needs of food are urgent. Mom, she said, these would also help Francis because he's running for a municipal councillor in 2022. She said, there are places here that are so affected and the municipal government cannot cater anymore to everything. So 
I said, okay, if I send funds to you, tell me exactly what you will do with them. And so she has to tell me, and so I have all of that written out and the amounts and what they're going to do. And based on that, I said, okay, tomorrow morning, I will go as soon as possible. And so I did. So now we're talking Tuesday morning. <laughs> I get to Western Union as soon as the doors open. And wouldn't you know, because of disasters, and this is very common, because of the disaster, criminals are at work. And so all, everything's heightened. And so they ask you, ton of questions and then up on the screen they actually said we're not supposed to let you in here but come and see this so I have to see this they said take a picture of it it said that they were holding the funds so we had the we put DTM put funds together with the funds that had come in okay because there was so much that would be required so the funds are going to be held for five days. I said, no, that can't happen. And they said, we're sorry, it's a policy. You have to call Western Union's headquarters yourself. So I had the phone number, I go home, I called, oh my, my, my. I was put through to three different departments. I want you to know what we go through, okay? Because sometimes you hear these stories and they sound really good, but there's stuff that has to happen to make all this stuff go, you know? You have to put legs to it. It's kind of like faith without works is dead so three departments and they same thing how well do you know these people how long have you known when did you meet under what circumstances did you meet how old are they how many children do they have when was the last time you saw them face to face would you recognize their voice if you heard it I'm like oh my goodness and what is your birth date where do you live what do you do? It just goes on and on and on and on. And, you know, where are the funds coming from? Who is the receiver? What are they going to do with it? Well, then the last person tells me I have to go home and wait for a phone call. About five minutes later, the phone rings, and it's the same person. And they said, we're sorry that you're so frustrated. <laughs> it was rather obvious. They said, but... This is what we have to do to secure that the funds are safe. And so they ask me all the same questions. And when they're done, they said, the funds are released. Finally. <laughs> so this is Tuesday. So I contact Tata right away and uh, tell her the funds are there. They can go get them and uh, ask her some questions and her responses. She says, yes, Mama Della. They call me Mama Della. I talked to one brother now, Brother Juni Demilda, the owner of the Gypney, and he went to the evacuation centers this morning. We come to an agreement to buy rice, trays of eggs, face masks, alcohol, vegetables, dried fish, and Francis, Pastor Francis, will share the word first, and then I'm going to pray for the people. This is the difference when you have believers, because God made us three parts. And you can feed people, but that doesn't mean they're going to go to heaven, right? So it's wonderful that um, they were going to go uh, to the evacuation centers. And that's where all these resources are going to, to feed the people there. And then, uh, and, and you're going to see some pictures with that. Um, okay, so... She says here that we will be going to the devastated area first of all and to our brethren and then to the others. And one of the reasons I wanted to, to mention and I'll show you the dead animals, the, all this water, this is just the beginning. When that water goes down, all those animals are dead there and bodies. But the animals, the dogs that are there and the chickens, they just run wild. And so all of their droppings, okay? All of the, the snakes, all that set the rats, all of that is in that water. So they don't have clean drinking water. If they have cuts, a lot of them do not have footwear. So there's a lot that, to look at down the road that they have to deal with. So I just loved, here's one of the first pictures that she sent, okay? That's Tata with a big smile. And uh, look at the boxes. I think they went and bought the store out. <laughs> 
<laughs> she said, I, I think initially they had eight, eight bags. These are big, big bags of rice, okay? The next picture, please. We'll go through some of these. Okay, these are, okay, this, these next um, number of pictures are in what was the children's church that I told you about, okay? It's like all hands on deck. They don't have all the modern stuff that we have here. So look at, there they are, and the eggs, the eggs are like, I guess you get about 36 of them in, in one of those big trays. They don't refrigerate them, they're all boiled. They're boiled eggs, okay? So there they are, and okay, next picture. And they're, they're going to be measuring out the rice. Look, at they're all sitting on the floor. Okay, next picture. So they have, de they have determined that every family, unless they were really, really big families, they will get two bags. One bag of rice and the other bag is what we call the vian, the sardines and, and the things like that. And one of the things she said to me, look at how many bags uh, that I didn't even think about. She said, Mom, what about the babies? What about the babies? See, they don't have cows. They don't have like dairy farms and milk like that. Everything's powdered or formula. So we included that as well. Okay, next picture. <laughs> look at all those bags. Eh? That's all rice. Filipinos love their rice. There they are. And, and, you know, they're not just working. Um, I have a video a clip that, that I didn't include in this, but they're singing and praying as they work. Okay, next picture, please. Yeah, look at Everything comes in small packages there because they go, they, it hits the currency as well, and they don't have refrigerators. So, you know, everything's like little packages. So they bought and they no doubt dumped the box out there in the middle of the room there and, and they portion it all out so that every family gets so much. Okay, next. That's Tata. Look at the smile on her face. She's just so happy because Brother Perfecto, he has this truck and um, he was only too glad to let them use the truck and so they um, are, now this is where they're going to some of the outer lying areas. And so you'll see the difference in the geographical, uh, you know, with the vegetation and the road and whatnot. But there they are with the truck and they putting all the supplies in. The pictures I'm showing you are just a tiny little bit. It can be multiplied many times over as they go to each village or each place along the way. Okay, next picture, please. That's the truck with, with uh, the goods being put in. Okay, next picture. That's Pastor Milan. Okay, there, was, there is one main road. Uh, they would call it a highway. Hmm. It's not paved. It has concrete in parts of it. Uh, so when this is, she has the church in Aramaywan. So you get out of of the, whatever vehicle you're in, at the side of that road, and you have to walk way, 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 way back in through jungle-like uh, vegetation and whatnot, and uh, then you come to a clearing where the church is. So she's taking this bag of supplies to one of the people that are under her care. Okay, next picture. I think the next few pictures are just of... Uh, people receiving the food. Look at this. I love this. How would you like to carry that on your head, Jimmy and Emily? Would you like to carry a big bag of rice like that on your head and walk like a mile <laughs> back in the bush? Okay, next picture. Mm -hmm. Children have tremendous responsibility in those cultures. Very different from here. Okay. Now, another child. Okay, next picture, please. Yeah. Yeah, there's probably more than one family. He's got more than the two bags. Okay, next picture, please. Okay, this is the people at uh, one of the villages or areas where the people have, have uh, gathered together, and uh, they're coming up to get their, they call it their blessing. 
<laughs> They'll say, come and get your blessing. And they make it very clear that this is from God. Okay, next picture. Yeah, there they are, lined up. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, you can, you can look at them for a long time. Okay, next picture. Now this. Okay, I love this. Do you see the man in the middle? That's Pastor Francis. Guess what he's doing? He's telling them about Jesus. And he'll do that before they receive their food. Yeah, this is so good. Okay, next picture. I think it's very similar. Ah, that uh, man with the silver hair, that's another pastor. But he's a pastor from Brooks Point. Oh, that is way, way, way at the southern tip of, of the island. And that's where, um, actually, Marion, who's on Zoom, she, she'll... She'll remember this. I told her about this American couple who were missionaries on uh, one of the other islands off of Mindanao, and they got, uh, the terrorists came and kidnapped them, and they took them across the water to the area of Brooks Point. And uh, this is incredible. You have, to, you have to realize how jungle it is there. For 13 months... 13 months, that's a year and a month. They hid these people from all of the people who were trying to rescue them. It, it's an amazing story. Um, her name is Gracia. Her, her husband was killed in the end. And uh, see, it's an amazing story. Anyway, um, that's where this pastor's from. I have ministered there. You're actually told not to go there uh, because of the terrorist activity. Do you know how he came to know the Lord? It's, his name is Robin. His first name is Robin. He was at a Bible study that Tata led, and Tata led him to the Lord. And he is an amazing pastor today. So, these Bible studies, home churches, bear fruit. Okay, next picture, please. So, he's helping. And what, what, what was happening, as, as now I'm just getting up to... Uh, Wednesday, as I tell you about this, so much happened in those first few days. Pastors were coming because they have people, they care for their sheep and they had nothing to give them. There's no food. It's, everything, it's just desperate. But who has the food? Who is it being funneled through? Tata and Francis. <laughs> and so, listen, if you've ever traveled, you know this. It's the same in Africa. There's pastors and churches on every corner, just like Tim Hortons. Not all are called. Various reasons for them doing what they're doing. So there's a lot of division. But here, in this crisis, people have come together, these pastors. And I, I'm just thrilled to hear this and see this. Okay, this, this is a few days later. And uh, she says... <sighs> said, these are the victims of Typhoon, this place where they're at in this picture. These are the victims of Typhoon Maring. She said, we went there yesterday and extend one sack of rice, five trays of eggs, and two cases of coffee, one box of face mask. The team ministered to the family with prayers. They lost their house and everything. They have nothing left. She said, we're going to Aramewan now, Mom, praying that we can minister to many. And she said later, that night, she said, Beloved Mama Della and ministry partners, that's every one of you. Every one of you that can hear me, every one of you that can see me. This is their heart's cry and their thanks to you. She said, so tired, but it's so fulfilling to see the happy faces and being comforted by the word of God and prayers. The depressed areas that are also so hungry for the word of God. She goes, hallelujah. We went to the victims where three family members died due to the flood, the three coffins that I showed you earlier. Okay, next picture. 
<laughs> ah, this is, these are the last two pictures, and I love it, I love it, I love it. She said the team ministered with prayers. They were going on to Aramee one, and they were tired. Okay, so. <laughs> when they saw that people lost clothes, <laughs> can you imagine? All you've got is clothes that are on you, and they're wet. So they put a call out on Facebook, <laughs> and uh, she was so shocked to see the response from their own people. This is incredible. And the people began to bring together clothes. And what they do is they just, and I've been there when this happened, they just dump it all in the middle of the floor. And, and I love this picture and, and the next one. Okay, if you can put the next one up, and I think that's the last one. Um, they just get in there like crazy. It's like, you know, and they're, I mean, they're desperate people. They're not, they don't hit each other or anything like that, but it's like, you want it, you better grab it, and they'll hold it up to see if it fits and throw it over the shoulder and start again, you know, because they're looking for things for their family. Awesome, just awesome. So that tells me a lot. That tells me a lot that they are starting to take care of their own needs. That's huge. That's huge. They don't always be dependent upon outsiders. That takes a lot of time and teaching them to do as much as they can for one another with what they have. And I'm seeing this happen. This is 17 years of working just in this area. Okay, so she had one more story. She said, hallelujah, thank you, Lord. She says, jumping and praising God, quite, quite exuberant. She said, after food packs distribution, a long, long time friend called us, cell phone, a president of the Rotary Club in Puerto Princesa. They are going to distribute food packs in Nara, but they want to channel it through the Father's House Church. That's Francis and Tata. She says, hallelujah. Of all the people they could call, you know, and, I, and I'm, I don't know whoever's going to hear all this, so I'm cautious about naming names there. But there are some dignitaries and people there. Who, who are they wanting to funnel things through? Francis and Tata, the favor of God is upon them. It says, 100 sacks of rice. Okay, that's those big ones, 100. She goes, glory to Jesus. Thank you so much, partners. I know God is working. Amen. She says, I have, I have teary eyes, Mom. And guess what? Who's that long, long, this is funny. Who's that long, long time friend that's calling us? You knew her. And you have picture, the two of you. Ha, 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 ha. When she knew that Francis is running as municipal counselor, she is so excited, Mom. She goes, it's Mommy. Deli story. And her son is the chairman of the Rotary Club in Porto. Okay. God works in such amazing ways. Many years ago, they took me to meet Madame Deli. She lives in Porto Princesa. Her family is very wealthy. She had wanted to give land. She has a heart for benevolence. And uh, I won't name the church that they were with at the time, but the leaders of the church took it, all the money, and uh, she'd be very bitter. So what happens? I'm sitting beside her <laughs> as she's pouring out her heart. And so it's as though nobody else is in the room, and she and I connect, and Jesus is there to heal her broken heart, and to rebuild trust again. They took the picture. Our heads are together, and they have this amazing sense of humor. Part of what knit us together, besides spirit to spirit, was that her name is Deli, D-E-L-L-Y, and my name is D-E-L-L-A. <laughs> she, she would laugh and thought that was so funny. So she became very interested in what I do there. 
And from time to time, she would come through Nara. She has a family member there. And then when she saw that I had this house, she couldn't get over it. And so I told her the story of how God provided it. And again, witnessing to her. Well, here she is. She calls Tata and Francis to find out, obviously, how her relative is in, in the town. And they talk to her about their needs and uh, what's happening. And she tells them about the partnership through here, through, through the ministry of DTM. God, she says, oh, my son. My son is head of the Rotary Club. She contacts her son to see how all this works, <laughs> the favor of God. And so it was the Rotary Club that then designated to send these 100 sacks of rice to be funneled through Francis and Tata. But where did it start? Where did all this start? It started with God, who sees all, who knows all, who spoke in advance to a couple. You know, it's hard not to get emotional about this. Who could have used that money for anything? But in obedience to Almighty God, such rewards for obedience, people. There's no shortcut for that. And that was the beginning. You sowed the seed that others saw and came along on top and beside. So why was I so excited about what I saw, the fingerprint of God through this? First, it was this couple obeying and the check that came, right? God went in went ahead, prepared provision. Then this just, it, this hit me on Wednesday before I called Pastor Bob. It, it just, I just stood back and went, oh my word. The prophetic word of Nancy Clark. I had to go get it. I don't know if you remember it. I am, um, did I, did I even put it in here? I, I think I did, but anyway. Um, it was God speaking to me, first person. He knew my heart. He knew my heart to be there. And he says, you will go again and again, but not now. And then there was the warning and the love and the care. He said, because you need to take care of your body. Listen, I am usually there at this time. Are you hearing me? This is the time of year that I'm usually there. What? In, in the, if you're not in pretty good physical state, what if I was out at one of the rural places where this flood hit in, in the night and there's nowhere to go or to get to? And not only that, I wouldn't have had any way of getting funds. Not there. You'd have to go to Puerto Princesa. There's, there's no way, no way that you could get transportation to go there. I was here for my safety, but also to be and, and to and to get well, because God cares about us. There is no detail in our life that is ever overlooked by him. Not He knows the hair on your head, or the hairs that you had on your head. He knows all things. Nothing, 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 nothing surpasses his heart and his ears. Nothing. The God who knows. The God who knows. And so I was able to be here. When that couple came, oh, do you see? It's like a tapestry. God is so amazing. And then, so that was the prophetic word. And then this is just awesome, as I've already alluded to the fact that these pastors came together in unity. These people came together in unity to work together for one common cause. Keep the main thing the main thing and forget the rest. Boy, could we learn some lessons. I was so impressed with the favor of God on Francis and Tata. I was impressed with their humility. They are very aware of what God is doing through them and how they, they feel so small. <laughs> God. There's so much in this, too. Um, you look at some of the big ministries, and not that, that they're all bad, they're not, but you watch as some of the pride gets in, 
and how the exposure has come and the shame and, and how it's affected the body of Christ. And uh, I see this couple who serve so faithfully, who have been so obedient and who have sacrificed and how God has elevated them. But they know and they walk in humility. Stay humble. Stay humble. And that's why I want to say again and again and again, it is nothing he uses us, but it's not us. It's God in us so that he and he alone gets all the glory. And that's part of why I wanted so much to share this morning so you could see what our amazing God has done there. And he will do it again. And he's doing it with Silas. And he's so faithful. And he's going to do it in our lives. And he has done it. And I'm going to say something about that in a minute. So one of the, the other things that, that just hit me in all of this was God's mercy and his love on full display for all to see. In the midst of the darkness that's all around, as we move forward in his love and obedience, whatever it is he asks us to do, it's God's mercy and his love that is in full display on planet Earth. Doesn't that sound like some of Pastor Bob's messages? His kingdom come on Earth as it is in heaven? How's it going to come? In Psalm 46, verse 10, it says, Be still, we all know this, be still and know. That word know, experientially. No, I know that, I know that, I know. I don't just hear it. I talked with a young woman yesterday. I was at a mental health <laughs> seminar. And uh, I was talking to this young woman. And she says, uh, people tell me I'm loved, but I don't know it. And I think for so many of us, we hear about Jesus, we talk about him, but we have yet to know him. And that's that walk of intimacy. And this church does so well in talking about that and bringing us to a place where we know him in an intimate relationship. So he says, be still and know that what? That I am God. There is no other. He is the only God, the God of the universe. Then in John 14, verse 13, he says, and I will... <laughs> I will do whatever you ask in my name. Why? Why? So that the Son may bring glory to the Father. It's all about bringing him glory. I, I wish we had the song or that I could play it. But um, one of the young men who contacted me in the early part of the week saying the words to this song, and it just brings me to naught. I, I heard this when I was in Mindanao for the first time. I didn't know the song. The song is familiar to you all. But I remember looking at the faces and the countenance of these people who have lived through such dire circumstances and disasters as they sing these songs, this song. And it's not just empty words from their lips, but their words from their heart because they know their God. You know the song, I'll speak the words. Hide me now under your wings. Cover me with your mighty hand. Can't you picture being covered in his mighty hand? When the oceans rise and the thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. And it repeats, I will soar with you above the storm. Find rest, my soul, in Christ alone. Know his power in quietness and trust. When the oceans rise and the thunders roar, I will soar with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. You are king over the flood. I will be still. Be still, my soul. I will be still and know that you are God. So you've heard of two countries that you've gone to in your prayers and your finances this morning, and you bear the fruit of 
all that you've sown into these countries. But I say to you, men and women of God, what storm have you been in? We all have storms, some smaller, some bigger. But to the one who's going through it, it's real, and it's hard, and it's tough. But we don't go it alone. I sat yesterday at the back of this room, and I did not disclose who I was for a reason. I listened as people who have severe CPTSD shared of the pain of their lives and the sorrow. And my heart was heavy and ached as I heard some of the empty cliches that well-meaning people in the church have said to them in their pain, and they leave feeling worse and hopeless than when they came into churches. A number of them had found their way back to church, and I listened, I listened, and I learned. I learned so much. Scripture taken out of context. Oh, how we need the truth. How we need the truth of God. We need people who study and take time to really know the word and preach the whole counsel of God. But you know what the biggest thing was? Love. Love. They talked about how having someone just listen to them without preaching at them, building a safe place in their heart where they could then begin to listen. Oh, how much we need to learn, how much I need to learn. It was a very valuable day. I'm thinking that it would be good to have them come here maybe sometime, the facilitator, and share. So what storms? And one of the things that hit me this morning, I was, I've been up since about 3 o'clock, you know, all this stuff goes on in my head. And, and the Lord brought to me, how many times do we say, I don't think I can make it through this? Whatever the situation is, the relationship, the job, finances, things break down, all kinds of things. I don't think I can make it through this. This is too much. I can't, I can't deal with this. Health, da-da-da-da. And you're all going, mm-hmm. Because sometimes things happen we don't want to share. We don't want anybody to know those deepest things that go on. There are things that there's only a couple of trusted people in my life that I have ever dared outside of God. You know why? And that came to me yesterday as I'm, because of shame. I don't want people to think bad of me. Yeah. How about health? Things, various reasons for health. It, someone was sharing about the sinful life that they had fallen into and then the health issues that came from it. And so this is what hit me this morning. Whatever it was that you thought you couldn't get through <laughs> or make through, where are you today? You're here. You are here. You are alive. You made it through. You came through, and you will come through. You have brothers and sisters in the Lord who will unite together. This is the finest hour of the church. It's the finest hour of the church to stand up, to stand up and be all that God called us to be. This church is so good. I'm, I'm so privileged to be in this church. So I'm kind of speaking to a bigger mass in my head, I guess, when I say these things. But to reach out to one another in love, compassion, to share the truth of the word of God, to bring hope where there is hopelessness, to bring his light. Sometimes it's just us walking into a space changes the atmosphere. Amen? Amen? Listen, I was so excited. It was last Sunday, I, last Sunday or Sunday before, one of Pastor Bob's messages just triggered me. I went for a walk and now I had damage done to my throat. I used to sing, and, and anyway, uh, so I don't sing out loud very much. And uh, I, I went for a walk around our big block, and uh, I was singing, and I didn't care who heard me. And I was singing little two songs, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. And then the other song, I don't know if I can say the words. Um, 
Oh my. Um, it, it's, we consider it somewhat of a classical. Um, whom will I fear? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom will I fear? Of whom shall I be afraid? Though the darkness press in around me. Da, 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 da. Yet, yet will I stand. Yet will my God be beside me. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid? <laughs> Oh, and I'm, I'm passing the homeless Harold, who's in our park. Hi, Harold, how are you today? I'm fine, ma'am. God bless you. The Lord is my light. And I'm walking by some Muslim people from our apartment. By, and I'm singing, and I'm looking them right in the eye as I pass them by. Be encouraged today. Be encouraged today. No matter what you go through, your prayers matter. Your life matters, and you are here today. So I have homework for you. Sometime today or tomorrow, I want you to get alone, and I want you to take a piece of paper, and I want you to write out five things that you thought you would never make it through. It's kind of like the Book of Remembrance, you know, like in the Old Testament. I never thought I would survive this death but I'm here. I'm standing. I lost my job. There's no money coming in. How will I pay my rent? How will I pay for? We made it through. God made a way. Five things. What are the storms that you faced? I'm not talking about today. I'm talking about in the past that you didn't think that you would make it through. Write it out. This is what it was. I'm here today. This is what happened. And then, give it up to him. And thank him. Thank him for all that he has done, all that he is doing, and all that he will do. Because he is God. And he loves you. Have a wonderful Sabbath day. Know that you are loved. Know that you are treasured. Know that you have a home in heaven and a good life here on earth with him. Amen.